All right, good morning, y'all. My name is Edwin Valderrama with UC San Diego's Early Academic Outreach Program. Today, I'm here to give you the first part of a two-part series of You Got Into College, Now What? Part one. So part one today, we'll be discussing how to SIR to a university. So for those of y'all who don't know what an SIR is, um, SIR is the Statement of Intent to Register. So for those seniors who have gotten into university, congratulations. We're gonna talk a little bit about how you SIR to that university and making sure that that choice you're making is the right choice. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. So first off and foremost, Congrats on your acceptance to university. Your hard work has definitely paid off and now you're one step closer to being um, on your way to university. So before we go into more detail, I wanna go ahead and present us an overview. So first and foremost, we'll be discussing what is an SIR and why it is important. After that, we'll go a little bit into selecting the right university and making sure that choice um, is correct for you. Talking about now, how do I SIR? A little bit after the SIR, as well as some closing thoughts. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, talking about what is an SIR. SIR stands for the Statement of Intent to Register. So this means that you'll be attending and enrolling at one specific university. So notice how I say one specific university. So you're only able to attend or SIR to one university. So that's very important because you're not able to SIR to multiple universities. So yes, you may have been accepted to two to three, four or many um, different universities, but you're only going to be able to send that statement of intent to register to one of those institutions. And that's very important because you want to submit that before May 1st. So I understand that being accepted to a variety of different universities may be a little troublesome um, in making that right decision. So that's what we're going to be talking about in our next slide, how you select that right university so that way you're not tempted to, to SIR to multiple institutions. All right, so now we are selecting the right university. So when selecting the right university, it can be broken down into two different things. So first and foremost is researching your school or schools. So when you're researching your school, you do want to consider the location of that university. You want to consider is that university in state or is it out of state? Is that university in your backyard, 100 miles away or across the nation? The reason you want to be considering those factors is because are you gonna be paying in-state tuition or out-of-state tuition? Those are very two different price tags, so you wanna consider those things as well. You also wanna consider what is around that university. Is there you know, nightlife for you, or is there nature around you? Or if those are things that you prioritize, you're definitely gonna want a university that, that has those priorities for you. So I have two links here, universitytv.com, as well as uvisit.com forward slash college search. So with the current pandemic, it's gonna be a little hard to go out and visit college campuses, but thankfully these two sites allow you a virtual reality tour of over 600 colleges and universities across the nation. So it's not every single university that there is available, but it does capture these very big institutions like UC San Diego, UCLA, Harvard, and so forth. So definitely check out those two links if you do wanna see um, your college campus without having to go to that specific university. Up next is culture. So culture, right? If you're a very academic student, very studious, do you want your university to reflect that? Or if you're a really big sports fan, does your university have that same, does that does share that same mindset as you or does it have division one sports? That culture, whatever that culture is important to you, you definitely want your university to reflect that. Up next is the major and programs. So if you got accepted as an undeclared major to your university, you definitely want to make sure that the, there are major and programs that are relevant to you at that specific university. And even on the opposite end, yes, you got accepted to that university with the major that you wanted to, but if you're not completely sure about it, you definitely want to make sure that there are major and programs that are relevant to you because you do have the option at university to change your major. Your major is not for life and forever. You do have that ability to change it if it's something that, that not suiting you for something a little better. Up next is comparing costs. So you definitely want to compare the financial aid award letters. So we do have a video out um, that goes into a little bit more detail of the financial aid award letters and breaks them down for you. But we'll just go ahead and 
go in a little bit into it to really explain how that plays into selecting the right university. So you definitely want to compare those letters as it determines the amount of free money that you're receiving or the money you have to pay back, such as the loans. So and that expected family contribution, that EFC. So you want to understand that, yes, you got accepted into your dream university. But if you're not receiving as much money as compared to another university that has accepted you, you want to make that decision because it's not just your first year that you'll be paying tuition um, and all those fees associated with the university. It's going to be four or five years. So that cost should definitely be a factor in your decision of selecting that right university for you. All right. Up next is how do I SIR? So you finally got that university down. You know where you want to attend. So how do you SIR to that institution? So it's broken down into three easy steps. So first is logging into your student portal. So you should have gotten information regarding your student portal via email um, a couple months and maybe in February, March, or even April. So you're gonna log into your student portal with your information and up next, you're gonna select the intent to enroll or the SIR option. So in those two options, it varies according to university university, but you're gonna see some language in regards to the intent to enroll or that SIR option. So you're going to go ahead and select that. And then after you select that, it's going to prompt you through a different process according to university to university. But that third step is paying that non-refundable SIR deposit. So for the UCs, the University of California system, it is a standard $250 fee across the board. So if you got accepted into one of the nine um, UCs, it's going to be that $250 non-refundable deposit. For the for the SIR and what that money does it just goes to your um, first year tuition or first fall term tuition uh, for that university for the C, uh, CSUs or California State Universities that amount does vary anywhere from fifty dollars to five hundred dollars so this is something you want to be aware of in terms of having to pay that deposit for the UCs if you did apply using a fee waiver you're able to defer the payment until your financial aid award letter. Um, comes in in the fall term. So something to keep in mind that there are exceptions, but you're going to want to go ahead and check with your specific institution um, if they do have those exceptions, as well as how you go about um, deferring that payment until your financial aid award letter does appear. So that is how you SIR. So now that you've SIR, you do want to consider some things for after the SIR. So first, right, is completing any required task. So it's making sure you send in that final transcript, any AP scores or anything else that your university is requiring of you to submit prior to that SIR or after the SIR. So make sure you want to be on top of that. I know with the current pandemic going on, you definitely want to be communicative with your counselors um, as teachers to make sure that these documents are being submitted if they're not submitted on your end. Up next is the housing. So housing, you want to make that decision to either live on campus or off campus and submit your application. So for part two of this two part series, we will be going into housing. So feel free to check out that video a little later. And last but not least is orientation. So some universities do have orientations um, that they make their freshman intent. So as a first time freshman, that's something you're going to want to be looking out in your student email or your student portal to make sure that you set up a date. Um, if that is applicable to you, orientation is a great way to get connected to your university, learn a little bit more about it, and then even um, ties into to housing, you know, finding some roommates to, to live with for your next year. So that is the after the SIR piece. And now we're going to go ahead and jump into some closing thoughts. So it's very important, y'all, to do your research. Like we talked about understanding that location. Is this university in your backyard? How far do you have to travel to attend this university? What is around that university um, that may be appealing or not appealing to you? Up next would be culture. Like what type of culture does that university have? Does it reflect the type of culture that, that you want or that you prioritize? And last but not least, those major and programs, making sure that the university does have major and programs that are relevant to you and to, to your interests. Secondly is commit to only one school. Because you did that research, you'll only be committing to one school. So you definitely don't want to submit multiple SARs to different universities. And last but not least, you want to finish strong. Your hard work has, has paid off and has got to you that, that admission acceptance to that university, but that admission acceptance is provisional. So if you don't do well your senior this last half of your senior year, they do have the ability to revoke your um, admission to that university. So don't let senioritis um, hit you too hard because you definitely want to finish strong and let the hard work completely pay off. 
So y'all, thank you for checking us out. We generally appreciate it. Um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about UC San Diego um, or the Early Academic Hours program here, definitely check us out on Instagram or Facebook. Um, we would very much appreciate that as we do post um, information regarding SIR, housing, but also student success, um, mental health, and much more. So thank you all for tuning in. So take care y'all um, and we'll see you again for our next video in part two, which is housing. So until then, take care y'all.